Hello everyone and welcome back to Art History Shorts. So like I mentioned in my last video, I'm going to spend some time talking about the art movement Impressionism. And uh, I also mentioned some of the things that were happening in history at the time that were influencing this movement. So in particular, I wanted to go into more depth about the art from Japan uh, that was contributing to Impressionism. Japan had been closed off from the world since around 1640, with only limited interaction with China and Holland. But around the 1850s, things changed when uh, trade opened up. After this, we see Japanese culture flooding into the West. We get a cultural collision where both the East and the West experience change as a result of each other's influences. But for the primary focus of this video, I'm just going to focus on the Japanese prince called Yukioe, which influenced the Impressionist. First, let's look at what yukioi is. The term yukioi translates to the floating world. They are woodblock prints that blended the realistic narratives of traditional picture scrolls with influences from decorative arts. Earliest yukioi works were screen paintings depicting the entertainment districts that is now modern day Tokyo and other cities. The earliest yukio prints presented scenes from daily life in a simple narrative manner. In addition to actors and courtesans, we see the everyday life of ordinary people, including crowds on the street. So if you watched my previous video on Impressionism, you can see how this starts to tie in with the Impressionist ideas and subject matters chosen, as these were things that they also liked to portray as well. Now, in terms of the style of these prints, uh, we see new ideas for approaching space, how it was flattened and there's attention paid to the atmosphere, uh, there are also decorative patterns while the figure is simplified. There are two Japanese yukioi artists that I'd like to highlight. The first being Hokusai, who is the most renowned and prolific of these artists. Uh, he produced an estimated 35,000 works during seven decades of almost ceaseless artistic creation. Hokusai called himself the old man mad with painting. He was in his 70s when he designed the series 36 Views of Mount Fuji. The artists of Impressionism would have had access to Hokusai's work at the 1867 International Exposition in Paris, where his work was displayed in the Japanese pavilion. The second artist was Hiroshij, a rival of Hokusai's, and was the last great master of the Japanese woodcut. Uh, he inspired the European Impressionists with his brilliant spatial compositions and the ability to capture the transient moments of the landscape. In the series 53 stages of the Tokaido, Hiroshij illustrated the 53 way stations along the eastern sea road from Edo to Koito, capturing subtle nuances of light, atmosphere, and season. He not only observed and captured the poetic splendor of nature, but related it to the lives of ordinary people as well. We also see novel and exciting ways that he created these spatial compositions in the series Famous Places in Edo, 100 Views. So now let's look at some of this art side by side so we can really understand and see the influences at work. Mary Cassatt, after visiting an 1890 exhibition of Yukioi prints in Paris, injected traits of the Yukio style into her work. She experimented with different print techniques in printmaking, like aquatint, dry point, etching, and hand coloring. She wanted to capture the flattened spaces and clean lines of the Japanese prints using these techniques with forms of a simplified figure. Looking at one of her etchings, the bath, we have a combination of Cassatt's favorite subjects, uh, women in domestic interiors with children and also a woman bathing. This print combines the sparse nature of Japanese woodcut designs with, with intricate color patterns. These kinds of scenes that Cassatt also liked to create were very common in Yukioi prints and very well may have contributed to her interest in them. Here we see another by Cassatt, the coiffure and a print by Kitagawa Utamaro, Takashima Owasa, using two mirrors to observe her coiffure that demonstrates the traits and lines of inspiration beautifully. Edgar Degas used similar compositions when portraying women bathing. In his pastel piece, The Tub, we have a novel vantage point, looking at this woman from above. There are flattened shapes, the curve of her body continues into the curve of the tub, almost joining them together in one circle. Degas does use traditional shading to achieve a more three-dimensional appearance, but the panel that he creates on the right here, with the more flattened objects, creates some ambiguity around the space. 
If we compare this to Urugawa Kunisada's Chrysanthemum from Contest of Modern Flowers, we see the same subject matter and similar surrounding objects. The angle viewing from above isn't quite as dramatic, but we aren't seeing her straight on either. Here are a couple more examples. Uh, this is a Degas with the subject of a woman combing her own hair and a print by Hashiguchi Goyo. And again, we see the same subject matter, uh, one by Degas and one by uh, Kirigawa Utamaro. Finally, let's look at these influences in Monet's work. So Monet actually built a Japanese-inspired um, bridge in his own gardens at his home in Giverny, um, and this was the subject of many of his well-known paintings. Here is another image of Monet's wife, where the influences of Japanese art clearly dominates the scene. There is a direct line in much of the art created by the Impressionists uh, and the work created by Japanese artists. The Impressionists drew inspiration from everything from subject matter to the way a line is drawn. The simplification of the figures, the flat appearance, uh, the decorative patterns are all seen and reworked by the Western artists uh, in an exploration of what art was to them at the time. Japanese art played a big role in what was to become modern art. The subject matters chosen and the techniques used would affect the course of art created, which is why I wanted to do a whole video on it. But next time, I'm going to be talking about one of Monet's paintings of the Japanese footbridge that I just discussed in this video, uh, but you might consider it to be one of his lesser known works of the subject. Please like or subscribe to the channel if you want to see more, and thanks, I'll see you next time.